Yeah, groovy tunes, bro. This is going to be a righteous party. Happy Hippie Olsen here. Let's do it. I even brought my hacky sack. Let's get it on. What? You don't want a hacky sack? You want to do math? All right, bro. I'm down with that. Let's do it. We got some math to get done, don't we? I know last night you guys were working on your chapter review. Well, let's take a look at that, everybody. Let's pull this up nice and close. Let's see what we got here. All right. Well, we started off with number one. We had to find the surface area. Looks like we're finding the surface area of a rectangular prism. Because I already have my front and back as length times width. That's the, how you find the area of a rectangle. Notice I have three different multiplication problems that I doubled because there's a front and back, a top and bottom, a left side and a right side. Then I add them all up, 62 feet squared. Take a look at number two, everybody. This guy must have been a square pyramid because the base was side times side, which was one times one. But if it's a pyramid, all your faces are triangles. One half the base times the height. One half times two times one, well that's a one, because half of two is one, and one times one is one. There's four triangular faces, add them all up with that base. Five inches squared, everybody, five. Let's take a look at number three. Three, we had a triangular pyramid. The base was a triangle, one half the base times the height. Oh, now we have three triangular faces. These were a little bit tricky to look at. I couldn't tell what numbers matched up to what dimensions. So it's okay if this one's a little tricky for you, everybody. But I said each triangular face was 15 by 11. Base and height were 15 11. Cut that in half, and I got an 82.5. Once again, add them all up, 299.75 meters squared. How about number four, everybody? Now we got to find the surface area of a cylinder. Bust out that cheat sheet. Look at that formula sheet. Copy down the formula, that's how you start your poetry, and then do what it tells you to do. Replace pi with the 3.14, the radius was a 2, the height must have been a 3. I do the multiplication, everybody, 62.8 centimeters squared. Moving right along, we then had to talk about finding the volume of a prism. Well, looks like this was a triangular prism, because to find the area of the base, it's one half the base times the height. Multiply that by the height of the prism. I replaced each variable, everybody, 324 inches cubed. Number seven, another volume of a prism. This one was a rectangular prism, so it's length times width. Four times two times the 5.2 is 41.6 yards cubed. And finally, number eight, everybody, we had to find the volume of a pyramid. Once again, look at that cheat sheet. Look at that formula sheet. One third the area of the base times the height. Well, it was a rectangular pyramid. Length times width times the height. All multiplied together, divided by three. 48 meters cubed. Right on, everybody. Uh, we're going to take a little break in our math chapter 10 before we do this test, everybody. And what we're going to do today is we're going to have a couple problems of the day we got to talk about. That's right. A couple more problems of the day. Let's take a look at our first problem of the day, everybody. Number one says, you're going to multiply any number by itself. You're going to get a square number, aren't you, everybody? Two times two is four, making four a square number. That's two by two, that square right there. Come on in a little closer. Let's take a look. 9 is also a square number, because 3 times 3 is 9. I can make a square 3 by 3. Does that mean 10 is a square number? No, you can't multiply any number by itself to get 10, or 11, or 12, or 13, 14, 15. What about 16? Oh, 4 by 4 makes 16. 16 is a square number. Well, what about cubes, everybody? Cubes are numbers you get by multiplying a number by itself, and then by itself again. It's kind of like finding volume. Length times width times height. Length times width times height. Two by two by two is eight. That makes eight a cube number, everybody. Same thing with the number 27. Three times three times three. Three by three by three. Hey, that looks like a Rubik's Cube, doesn't it? 
gives you 27. So 27 is what we call a cube number. This big cube is made up of 27 little cubes. So the question, everybody, is there's only one two-digit number. That means it's between 10 and 99. That's both a square and a cube. What is it? You know what I would do, everybody? I would start making a list. I would make a list of all those square numbers, starting with the smallest, going up to the biggest. Then I would do the same thing for your cube numbers. Much shorter list. Then compare those two lists. Which number is the same? All right. We also, everybody, have a problem of the day. Number two. <laughs> Looks a little something like this. So, I was driving in my truck the other day when I noticed my CD player wasn't working anymore. And it got me to thinking, hip, happy hippie Olson. And I started thinking about the good old days with records. Now we call them vinyl, because that's what they're made out of, vinyl. So an old trick question was, how many grooves on a record? Well, you know what the answer is, everybody? Just one. There's only one groove. It makes a big spiral. So as that record's playing, the needle slowly starts moving its way in. That's how a record works. CDs, on the other hand, are kind of the opposite, everybody. They start on the inside, and they spiral outward. Hmm. So that got me to thinking. If I got a record and I got my compact disc, we have what's called inner grooves and outer grooves. Back in the old hippie days, everybody, when they'd go to the music studio to record, it was on tape. Then hit record, and everything they played would get put onto this tape. Imagine my snakes here, tape. And it'd be nice and straight and long, just like a string. You could then transfer that tape to the vinyl by kind of wrapping it around into a circle. Can you kind of picture that? Now, if the snake's head here is the beginning, that's what a record looks like. It starts playing on the outside and slowly winds its way to the inside of the record before it's done. Now, we also take that tape and we do the opposite when we make our CDs. Notice now the head of the snake is on the inside. So as the tape or CD starts to play the song, it slowly works its way to the outer edge of that circle. So, here's the big question for y'all. Are you ready? So, we got our compact disc that has an inner groove and an outer groove. Because again, it's spiraling outward. Right, everybody? So, my made-up question that I'm real curious about is, you have a CD, how many inner groove songs could fit on the outer groove? Does that make sense? So, the inner groove has a diameter of 15 centimeters on this here CD. But the outer groove is much, much longer. It's 36.74 centimeters. Can you guys all see those numbers? So the question is, on a CD, how many inner groove songs would fit in the outer groove? I think that's a good engineering question. I know records and CDs are all gone away, but maybe this will help some of you with the future, because I need a better CD player in my car. All right, so there you have it, everybody. Uh, the trick to solve this problem is, let's find the circumference, because remember, circumference is the distance around that circle, and then we're just gonna straighten it out. That's circumference right there. The circumference of that circle is the length of this straight line. So, let's find the circumference of that inner groove, let's find the circumference of that outer groove, and maybe do a little division. Good luck, everybody. See you later.